Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a while since I've done a vlog style video, but I tend to do a small recap whenever I go to a woodworking convention. And today, the 8th of February 2019, the woodworking show was held in the St. Louis area and I was able to visit. And so I wanted to share a little bit of my experience with all of you. In case you've never been to one of these woodworking shows, um, hopefully I can give you an idea of what to expect. But they are a lot of fun, and um, there's opportunities to learn about new tools, um, to get good deals, usually local deals, on uh, wood and slabs, and um, tools as well and also possibly get to know um, some some new people and some uh, new faces in the industry. Um, so before I get started, uh, I just wanted to note, did you guys know that I also have, besides my YouTube account, I have a Twitter, an Instagram, and a Facebook account. So if you're interested in uh, learning or being up to date on the projects that I'm working on currently, you can go to any one of those social media platforms. I'm most active on Instagram, but my Instagram auto-uploads to my other media accounts. And if you ever have any questions or would like to reach out and say hi to me, you can do so through any of those platforms. Now, back to the woodworking show. So this year's woodworking show seemed to be a lot smaller uh, than it has been in the past. There was a lot less representation from the larger brands. Um, notably missing was Powermatic and Triton Tools, which are pretty big. And then the biggest gap, I think, was um, Peachtree Woodworking usually leases out a large amount of space and they sell several different brands like Microjig and Craig brand tools and they were not there. Uh, I'm not sure what the reason is. I don't know if this means that the woodworking show is in decline, um, but it was noticeable that they weren't there. But on the upside, what it did is it opened up floor space for a lot more of the smaller vendors and I feel like the smaller vendors tend to give us um, attendees a better deal on uh, what we're looking for and I'll share with you some of the things that I picked up um, at this woodworking show. So did you know that there were competitors to the Craig jig that doesn't use the exact same type of pocket hole that Craig uses? I did not until I went to this year's woodworking show. There's a company called CastleUSA.com this is their business card. It's a block of wood. And they are kind of an alternative, maybe higher end style pocket hole system that they use for cabinetry building. And the reason their business card is a block of wood is because in that block of wood is an example of the type of pocket holes that they create. Um, their system uses a router and it creates a pocket hole at a much more shallower angle and the biggest advantage of having a shallower angle of attack is that it, the pieces don't move when you're trying to fasten them together. I don't know if you've had this experience with when you're using a Craig pocket hole but I have where when I'm screwing the pieces together even when they're clamped down they want to kind of slide and, and then they're out of alignment once the screw is already committed. Um, and then another benefit of this system is that since it's coming into, since the screw is driving into the wood at a shallower angle, it leaves more meat above and below the screw threads. Um, so it makes for a stronger joint and less chance of the piece that you're attaching to blowing out. So anyway, I met a really great guy who was the rep for that company. His name's Freddie. He actually has a YouTube channel and I will link that channel uh, down below um, in the description as well as up in the card and um, his name's Freddie and he's got a really great uh, channel um, his community is called Redneck DIY and he does a lot of really interesting things on his channel so I suggest you check him out 
And uh, he was very gracious and he kind of walked me through um, all of the uh, kind of the uh, reasoning behind why this type of system might be better. And I'm interested in trying it out. Um, their machine is, uh, it appears to be made for industrial type settings. So it may not be practical for a uh, weekend warrior such as myself, but I may, it may inspire me to create something that does a similar type pocket in wood. All right, so let me talk a little bit about some of the things that I found uh, at this woodworking show. Like I said, I like to buy local when I can, um, especially um, one of the, I guess one of the benefits of these woodworking shows is that a lot of local um, sawyers and uh, sawmill owners bring their woods and their materials and their slabs to the show to sell and they usually give you a pretty reasonable price. So if you can look over my shoulder right here you'll see a, a large um, cherry slab leaning up against the wall. It's about nine feet tall and about 14 inches wide, an inch and a half thick. I will show you some footage of it right now as I'm talking and I was, and it's very clean, it's a very nice slab. I go to these shows right when they first open so I can kind of get the, you know, first dibs on these things that are available. And uh, this whole slab only cost me $40 and it's going to turn into a nice bench, tabletop, or even if I break it down into usable lumber, it is only about uh, $2.70 a, a board foot, which is, for any type of cherry, that's a steal. So I'm pretty thrilled with that. Um, anytime you go to a woodworking show, you usually end up with a Veritas or a Lee Valley uh, bag because they give them out everywhere. Um, but here's some things that I pick up. These are some great... You need to keep your eyes open for these types of deals, and I usually wait for the annual woodworking show to pick up this stuff because the deals are uh, too good. They're way better than what you can find in the stores. So since now that I have a um, one inch by 30 inch belt grinder, I need to get belts. And so I was able to get a dozen of the 60 grit ceramic belts for $15. It's better than anything you can find online. It's the exact same brand that you can find online. It's this Deerfos brand, um, which pretty much all of the belt, the, the grinding belts that I have are this exact same brand, but this was a great price. Um, I didn't buy any hand tools like I usually do because I'm pretty, I'm pretty well off on uh, hand planes and, and other hand measuring tools and stuff. So this year was the year that I invested in some abrasives. So, I'll dig some of this out here. Norton. Norton is a decent brand of abrasive. I don't really, I don't really um, <clears throat> have enough experience with it to tell you 100% on, like a, on a scale of 1 to 10 how great they are. But, I was able to get my hands on these Norton um, five-inch uh, sanding discs for my DeWalt Random Orbit Sander. Um, they were 50 cents a pack, and you get four in a pack, so I bought 20 of them. Um, so I'm pretty set up, and this is these are just low grits. So uh, I think it was 60 and 100 grit is what I've got here. And then at another booth, I found some more. Um, packs of these. Similar deal. Uh, these were five dollars for two. You get more. These are um, ten packs, and they had a little bit higher grit. They had 150 grit, and so I went ahead and grabbed some more. I don't know if uh, this year Norton um, changed. You know their marketing, you know, like their packaging and stuff, and so these were uh, these were cleared out or what. But it's a great deal for me, and really, I think that's pretty much all I ended up with this year. Um, you don't have to spend any money at these shows, but I do like to take advantage of good deals when I find them. So 
Let me know what you guys think about uh, this type of uh, format, if you like these type of vlogs. I usually do a vlog section on my live streams every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Central. Um, but if you like the pre-recorded stuff, go ahead and let me know in the comments section down below. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button um, and give this video a like. Um, all comments are welcome. I read every single comment that comes through and I usually respond to them as long as they um, warrant some type of a response. So once again guys, my name is Tom. Uh, thanks for coming by. I'll talk to you guys later.